Father, we come to you on this Lord's Day. We thank you again for the week you gave us. We thank you for the sunshine, the rest you gave us last night. We thank you for the freedom we have in this nation to be able to come to worship you. We pray, Lord, we to continue to have that freedom until you call us home in the rapture. And Father, we just pray that you bless each and every one that's here and those who are listening online. Bless your servant. Give me the words that need to be said and spoken. And, and that, Father, the hearts and minds and ears will be open to hear that word. And that, um, Father, we may be able to use some of the things that get taught, not only today, but each and every, every sermon that we can use them to try to win more souls for you, Lord. And, Father, we just pray for this nation that you give wisdom to our leaders to turn from their wickedness and from following Satan and to start following you, Lord. And that, Father, that uh, they'll turn away from trying to bring about this one world government. We know it's going to happen, but it, uh, if we can postpone it for a little while, Lord. And Father, we just pray that you, again, bless this service. Just be with those missionaries and all those preachers, pastors that are out there preaching your word today. Those that the true ones that are preaching out of the King James Bible. And that, Father, that, that are out there trying to win many souls for you. And that today, that many might be won for you. And Father, we just... Thank you again for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, the title of my sermon is Jesus versus Muhammad. Now, Islam claims that both Jesus and Muhammad were prophets, with Muhammad being the last prophet and the greatest prophet. Scripture clearly shows that there is no comparison between the two historical figures and how Jesus is really the greater. You know, I want to look at a few things here. You know, I've preached on Islam before, the false religion of Islam. But I want to look at some stuff. And either next week or maybe another week, we're going to look at a few other things, comparisons and stuff. But, you know, Islam is actually the uh, largest religion in the world. You know, there's close to, I don't know, I forgot now. I think it's like about close to 1.9 billion, one point. Six billion, I don't know, some ridiculous amount. You know, they're just uh, a lot of them out there. You know, it's close to uh, a quarter of all the world's population. You know, there's a little over eight billion. So you figure there's close to, you know, get close to two billion. So, you know, it's not quite a quarter, but, you know, probably 20% of the world's population is, is Muslim, at least in name. And so I want to look at some things because, you know, they, you know, the, Islam claims that Jesus, you know, that he was a prophet, but that he, you know, was he was not God and this kind of stuff like that. And, um, you know, that Muhammad was much greater than him. But we're going to see that, you know, by not only scripture, but even from things from the Quran, that anybody with a brain can see that, that Muhammad was not greater than Jesus. You know, Jesus did all kinds of things that even the, the, the Muslims agree that he did. But they never give credit to uh, Muhammad for doing those things. So, anyway, like I said, I want to look at a few of these things because, you know, it is such a prevalent religion and it's starting to, you know, it's very prevalent in very parts of the world, but it's also starting to get more prevalent here. You know, I've seen, like, you know, in uh, Minnesota, they just recently uh, approved. Uh, Something to do with like Sharia. So I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what it was. Then, but I mean, there's three. Oh, I know what it was. It was they, they're allowing them to violate the noise ordinance and how the at the mosque they always blare all that you know five times a day to announce the prayers and stuff early in the morning and, and night and everything else. Well, that's against the noise ordinance, but they 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 made an exception for them because oh it's okay you know because three of the members of the council are, are Muslims themselves. And, you know, so, it's, you know, that's, it just shows you how we just keep catering and catering to the Muslims that, you know, we have these noise ordinance for a reason. So we don't have to listen to their garbage or anything, you know, early in the morning or late at night. But, oh, we'll make exceptions for the Muslims. They just do it over and over and over again all the time. You know, people just keep catering to them. So anyway, that's just it. So we see that, uh, you know, they claim that. Muhammad was the, the greater of the prophet, you know, greatest prophet. You know, that Jesus was a prophet, but the Muhammad was greater. Well, let's look at some of these things. Muhammad was born a man of a woman, just like the rest of us. But Jesus was born of a virgin, 
So the miraculous account of Jesus starts with his birth. You know, we're going to see even a crayon also admits that Jesus was born of a virgin, but Muhammad was not. You know, so we're going to look at this from uh, scripture and from the Quran. But, you know, the, even the Quran admits that, you know, even Muhammad himself, he never claimed. He just said, you know, he was born of, just like every one of us. There's a woman and born in sin and so forth. So let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Most people know this because you see it all the time at Christmas time on cards and so forth like that. But Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You know, and if you went to Matthew 1, 23, you would see that Emmanuel means God with us. You know, so we know that it's Jesus, you know, that Jesus is God. Everybody knows that that's referring to Jesus. And as I said, the Quran also admits that Jesus was born of a virgin, but that Muhammad was not. In Surah, I'm going to read this is from the Quran here, Surah 19, verse 20. She wondered, how can I have a son when no man has ever touched me, nor am I unchaste? Now, unchaste means, in, you know, involved in sexual activity. In other words, she's saying that, you know, I've never even been involved in sexual activity. You know, she's saying she's a virgin. You know, so they, they agree that she was, you know, that Jesus was born of a virgin. But yet, you know, she says, no, no man has ever touched me. You know, so, you know, they both agree that Jesus was born of a virgin. Muhammad claimed to be only a man, which he was, yet Jesus said he was the son of God and yet also still man as the son of man. You know, Jesus, he is and was, and he, he claimed that he was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. You know, he's the God-man. You know, he never lost his deity when he became a man. You know, Muhammad never claimed to be God. He just said he was a man. But, you know, so Muhammad said he was he was a prophet and nothing more. You know, that's all. Muhammad just claimed he was a prophet. He never said that he was God or anything like that. Well, let's take a look at John chapter 10, verse 30. So John chapter 10 and verse 30. John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my Father are one. And then go down to verse 36 of John chapter 10, verse 36. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God. You know, so Jesus, he was saying that, you know, I am the Son of God. I I, I am my Father of one. You know, and then remember, they wanted to, to, to stone him, you know, for blasphemy. And he's saying, why you, you know, want to stone me for blasphemy? Because I said that I am the Son of God. Because I am the Son of God. You know, he is God. You know, so he was, you know, that, that's what they understood there. When he said, I am my Father of one, he, they understood that. That's what he was saying, that he was God. You know, he was equal with the Father. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. Keep your finger well, that's right. Keep your, uh, go to Mark chapter 10, verse 45. So Mark chapter 10 and verse 45. Okay, Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom <laughs> for many. So see here, then, you know, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man. In fact, he actually used the title Son of Man more often than he did Son of God. And, um, you know, he wanted everybody to understand, you know, he's both. He, he, was, he was truly a man so he could die for our sins, but yet he was still truly God. All right, let's go back to John. So go back to John chapter 1 and verse 3. Because we're going to see that Scripture shows that Jesus, you know, shows Jesus to be the creator. You know, Jesus, he's the word, you know, he created everything. And so, you know, there's many, many verses, you know, we can, we can look at. We're just going to look at a couple verses that show that Jesus is the creator. You know, Jesus is the one who created Muhammad himself. So look at uh, John chapter 1 and verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And then go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. But in, we saw there in John chapter 1, verse 3, that, you know, God made everything. You know, there was nothing made 
that was made that was not made by Jesus. You know, that, that, that every single thing God created. You know, it doesn't matter if it's people, planets, you know, stars, animals, plants, elements, you know, all the gold, silver, whatever, trees, all that stuff. So look at Colossians chapter 1 in verse 16. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So we see here that he created everything that was in heaven, things that are here in earth. You know, the visible and invisible, you know, that's all your spiritual world, the, the angels, the, the, the cherubims, the you know, the thrones, the minions, all these, these things like that, the, the seraphims and stuff, you know, the archangels. Muhammad was just a creature and was made by the creator, and he never claimed otherwise. You know, like I said, Muhammad himself was created by Jesus. You know, he never claimed to be a creator. He never claimed to have done anything, you know, but yet Jesus did. You know, Jesus, and we see the, the things, what the miracles that Jesus did, you know, turning water into wine, those kind of things. You know, only a creator can do those things. I mean, you literally have to transform the, there's different elements that uh, are in water versus, you know, wine or grape juice, you know, that, that they're made of different things. So you're literally changing the elements in order to do these things. Well, only a creator, you know, can do those things. And that's why if Jesus is a creator, he could do those things. You know, nobody else ever did those kind of miracles. Now, Muhammad said he received his revelation from an angel, and he claimed he did not know if it was evil or not. But Jesus said he got his from God the Father. You know, there was a, originally, Muhammad thought that when he first got this vision, you know, or when he says he got this vision, then he said he thought it was actually Satan or devil, and which it really was. But, you know, his wife convinced him otherwise, and he was convinced, and, you know, finally he's like, but, you know, I mean, my, his first thought was, this was not from God, it was, that it was from Satan. So, you know, it shows you the difference here that, you know, this was this revelation that he got. But yet, Jesus got his from God the Father. So let's go back to John chapter 5, verse 9. So go back in John to, to chapter 5, verse 19. So John chapter 5, verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. You know, he, and there's other things, you know, we're seeing there that it talks about, you know, it's not my will, but, you know, their, you know, thy will be done. You know, when he was praying, remember when Jesus was praying, you know, he said, you know, you know it's not my will, but, you know, I tell God the Father that thine will be done. You know, that he, he, he did whatever, you know, his, you know, his calling was coming from God the Father. Now, God was pleased of his son, Jesus, as he personally commissioned him into the ministry Whereas the angel Gabriel supposedly called Muhammad, you know, he claims that it was the angel Gabriel, which is the one that went to, you know, Mary and Joseph and, and so forth, but, and, you know, Daniel, but, you know, obviously it wasn't, like I said, his own first name was, it was from a devil. Well, like I said, it was right. But even so, even if just saying hypothetically, if it was, you know, his only came from an angel, whereas mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, min uh, ministry came directly from God the Father. So let's look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, so God the Father, he called directly from heaven, and he told everybody, you know, that this was his beloved Son, in whom he is well pleased. You know, he's well pleased to allow him to do this ministry. You know, that he was called directly by God the Father. Whereas Muhammad, as I said, he was boldly only called by an angel. Now, Muhammad fought many battles and encouraged his followers to fight. He killed many people, whereas Jesus never killed anyone, but rather raised people from the dead. You know, everybody that seemed to be around Muhammad seemed to end up dead. It's kind of like, you know, a lot of politicians like Hillary Clinton and a few other ones that are out there. You know, good thing you're friends with them because, if, you know, if you're enemies, then, you know, you're dead as a friend. But as, a, and as an enemy, then, but, you know, certain people, they just hang around and they just, you just seem to end up dead. Well, Muhammad was kind of one of those people, whereas Jesus, it was just the opposite. 
You know, he never killed anybody, never harmed anybody. In fact, he actually raised people from the dead rather than killing them. Let's look at Luke chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. So Luke chapter 7, verses 14 and 15. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bear him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. You know, so that was, you know, Jesus raised three people from the dead. You know, there's this one, Lazarus, and the, um, that, that little girl or whatever. But, um, you know, this is just an example here. But this shows you the difference. You know, Muhammad's busy killing people. And Jesus is sitting there raising people from the dead. Now, Jesus also never fought in any battles, but instead said to love your enemies. Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. You know, Muhammad, as I said, he, you know, even today we see that with Islam. They're, they're constantly, they kill anybody that disagrees with them. And, you know, that's not what Jesus said to do. Jesus said to love your enemies. Now, I agree. I'm not saying that's always an easy thing to, to uh, obey, but that's what God, you know, Jesus commands us to do. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, Jesus condemned the people that were trying to make him king in order to overthrow the Roman government. Yet Muhammad encouraged disorder against government. You know, remember the people kept trying to make Jesus a king. And he said, no, you know, that, that's not what he came. You know, he came to save the world. But yet Muhammad, that, he encouraged people to go around overthrowing governments and things like that. You know, so we see the difference there on how, you know, these two men were. Now Muhammad stole from many people as he conquered them, whereas Jesus never stole from anyone. You know, God condemns thievery. Turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Now, that's one of the Ten Commandments that we're going to look at here. So, so uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. But, you know, as, when, when Muhammad, when they would go in there, when they would conquer these people, you know, again, it goes back to this fighting. They were conquering people, destroying them, killing them, doing whatever. And then they were taking all their goods and so forth, stealing from them and whatnot, leaving for dead. You know, Jesus never did. And I remember, Jesus didn't even have a place to place his head, you know, a bed to put his head on. He had nothing, you know, he had basically what the clothes he was wearing, and that's it, and so forth. You know, but Muhammad, he's over here stealing stuff. You know, and remember, Jesus is God. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. You know, it doesn't get any clearer than that, and yet Muhammad, you know, had no problem stealing. You know, not, and it's sad, but unfortunately, a lot of Christians today seem to never have any problem with that either. But Muhammad had at least 11 wives. You know, some sources say as many as 23. You know, there's different sources, but regardless, even if it was 11 or 23 or whatever, you know, he had a lot of wives. You know, and that includes uh, Asia that he married when, when she was six years old. You know, one he um, married after beheading her husband, you know, who refused to convert. You know, there was one woman that her husband was trying to protect her, and she refused to convert. And he uh, beheaded him, killed him, beheaded him, and then took his, his wife, you know, to be his wife. You know, he was married to many at the same time, and he also had had concubines. So, you know, it wasn't like he, he married one, and she died or divorced her, and then he got another one. I mean, he had multiple wives at the same time. Now, the only one at the time he ever just had one wife was his first wife because she wasn't going to tolerate that. You know, that she's one to help you know, form Islam. But, you know, after that, that's when he had all his wives. Like I said, he had a six-year-old here for a wife. Now, many of his wives had been divorced. You know, as I said, most of his wives were either, you know, except for Asia, you know, had been either divorced or widowed. You know, there were some that were widowed too, but you know, a lot of them had been divorced, or like in this case here, now like I said, that one, she was technically widowed, but it was, she was widowed because she went and, because a piece of garbage Muhammad took and beheaded the, um, 
you know, her husband. That's why she would win him. But God condemns such things, you know, not, not only what he was doing, but also being divorced. You know, God doesn't want, you know, you're not allowed to marry people that are divorced. You know, God condemns that. Look at what Matthew chapter 5, verse 32 says. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. Matthew chapter 5, verse 32. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. You know, so, you know, not only is he committing all these sins with polygamy, but having more than one wife, but yet he is also marrying all these, these um uh, Women that have been divorced and everything else. You know, so he was very guilty of adultery. You know, and it's, you know, we can look that up too, where you know it tells you not to have, you know, to commit adultery. You know, that's no one of the Ten Commandments and so forth. But, but you know, Jesus never married. You know, the church is the bride of Jesus. You know, that's that's the wife of Jesus. That's the, the church. You know, us as the church, we're the bride of Jesus. Now, Muhammad had little regard for females. When Muhammad said that a man could beat his wife and serve up for Verse 34, Muhammad said in the Hadith that women were only half as smart as men and that the majority of those in hell were women. He also said you could mortgage women. You know, they, I mean, even today, the Islam has no respect for their women. They could just, I, I divorce you and the man can divorce the wife, but the wife can't divorce the man. And they could just do whatever they want. I mean, they, they treat them like slaves, you know, they make them, stay covered all the time, their body and stuff like that. And just, you know, they, they have no respect for the female. I mean, the only reason why that, you know, most Muslim men are actually homosexuals. They're just, the only reason why they have a wife is so they can produce a baby, so they can keep having a lot of Muslims, you know, to, to overtake the world. That's their goal is to try to overtake the world. So that's, they keep having all these babies. But most are actually homosexuals. You know, they're sodomites. And, you know, other than that, they have no use for the women. Now, Muhammad owned slaves while Jesus never did. You know, Jesus cared for the poor, the lame, slaves, and others while Muhammad oppressed them and used them for his purpose. You know, this fact alone should discourage blacks from converting to Islam. You know, blacks are constantly converting to Islam more than anybody. And they want to complain about all this stuff and go woke and all this other stuff. Oh, we, we can't have Washington statues. We can't have this because these people are slave owners. Well, your beloved Muhammad was a slave owner too, so why don't you stop going to serving him and go serve the true God in the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, blacks need to wake up, people. Now, Muhammad is never said to have performed any miracles, yet Jesus performed many miracles during his ministry, including raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and walking to the lame. He did other miracles as well, such as feeding 5,000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes, casting out devils, healing lepers, and walking on water. Now, those are just some of his miracles. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 7, verses 21 through 22. So Luke chapter 7, verses 21 and 22. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. You know, see that there, how Jesus went to the poor. Muhammad, he didn't have any use for the poor. You know, he wasn't going to go around and certainly give them the gospel or something. Now, the Quran also says Jesus did many miracles, including also raising the dead and healing lepers. It also attributes some to Jesus that Scripture never says he did. You know, it has additional miracles that Jesus, you know, supposedly did, which the point is, though, that they, they're they giving him all these miracles. They're admitting that Jesus did these miracles. But yet... We're going to see here that Muhammad never did. Surah 349, and speaking of Jesus, this is from the Quran. Surah 349 says, And make him a messenger to the children of Israel to proclaim, I have come to you with a sign from the Lord. 
I will make, speaking of Jesus here, I will make for you a bird from clay. Breathe into it, and it will become a real bird by Allah's will. So he's, he's taking a, a clay bird and, and making it alive into a real bird. I will heal the blind and the leper and raise the dead to life by Allah's will. And I will prophesy what you eat and store in your houses. Surely in this is a sign for you if you truly believe. So we see that, you know, that some of the miracles are, are, you know, making a bird from clay, turning into a real bird, you know, healing the blind, you know, giving them sight and clean, cleansing the lepers and raising the dead. You know, so some of those are the same as from Scripture. Of course, the bird thing is not, but the blind, the leper, the raising the dead. So, you know, even a crayon amidst these things. And like I said, but yet they never... You know, and also Jesus supposedly could speak from birth, you know, so, you know, we see that the miracles and things that they give him, but yet they never say that Muhammad did any miracles and he doesn't claim to have done any miracles. Now, Muhammad was never said by Muslims to be able to have foreknowledge of things, whereas it attributes this to Jesus. Muslims say that Jesus was able to answer all questions that were asked of him and to know what things a person had in their homes or what they had just eaten. Scripture describes this attribute of Jesus as well. Theologically, you know, we call this omniscience, which is attribute of God only. It means all-knowing. You know, this is one thing that, that you know, God is omnipresent, is omniscient, is omnipotent. You know, it means all-powerful, he's present everywhere, and then omniscience, you know, he's all-knowing. You know, so the Quran also basically is saying the same thing that Jesus could read. I mean, only somebody that's God could, I can sit there and read people's thoughts. And all, you know, everybody says, oh, Satan, you know, Satan cannot read our thoughts and things like that. You know, he kind of knows things. I mean, if you watch it long enough, I can figure out, okay, this person likes to do this or this person does that or whatever. You know, and they have a pattern. But, God, you know, they, they cannot read our thoughts. Only God can read our thoughts. But we see in Scripture that Jesus reads people's thoughts. Turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. So Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. You know, some of that stuff on the Islam, that's from like the Hadith and some of that stuff. But, you know, it's another book of Islam. But Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? You know, there's other places too that, you know, we could show you. But Jesus is able to read people's thoughts, you know. Like I said, only God can do that. You know, but Muhammad was never said to be able to read or know things, you know, that without being somewhere that Muhammad could go and say, hey, inside your house there you have this and this and this and it's hid underneath this bed. You know, but Jesus, you know, could do that. And, you know, and the Quran even said that Jesus could do that stuff. So, you know, the, the Quran agrees that, that Jesus could do these things. But Muhammad never could. Now, Muhammad taught Muslims to pray repetitious prayers, which God condemns. Whereas Jesus taught his disciples to pray from their heart. Excuse me. Muslims pray five times a day facing Mecca and say the same words over and over. You know, every day, they, one of the things they have to say is, I don't remember the exact words, but anyway, he basically it's saying that, you know, it's their way of saying, you know, if you say these words, then you're supposed to become a Muslim. And they have to say these things like every day. You know, because they, I guess, you know, they, they could lose their, you know, salvation, if you want to say it, that, you know, so they got to keep re-saying it every day to make sure they're still a Muslim or something like that. I don't know. It's just stupid. But um, look at what, you know, God condemned this repetitious prayer. You know, he doesn't want the same thing over and over. You know, like Roman Catholics do the same thing. Well, remember, Roman Catholics are the ones that started Islam. So that's why they have a lot of these similarities. But the... Um, Look, look at, you know, like I said, it's just over and over the same prayer. But look what Matt got, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, that's your Muslims, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, they all come there. You've seen these pictures of them. They all gather and everything else. They don't have anything better to do. Get out there, leave work or do whatever. And, uh, you know, they all gather together and, you know, they just do these repetitions over and over. Now, Muslims make a big show of praying, whereas Jesus taught to pray privately in your closet. Go back a couple verses. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Look at verses 5 and 6. 
And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You know, I've said this before. I'm not saying you have to literally go into a closet or whatever. And it's not saying that you can never have public prayer. Like, you know, I pray at, 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 when we start our service or at the end or so forth. You know, it's not saying that, but it's just when you're making a big show, like even the Jews would do the same thing, which Jesus was talking about. They all come in there, want to make sure that everybody sees them and everybody can hear their prayer. And, and uh, they want to make a big deal about it. Well, that's what the Muslims all do. They, you know, as I said, you know, I, I said they have this thing where they call everybody to prayer you know, they get to remind you, hey, it's it's such, such time, you know, you need to go and pray so everybody gets to the mosque or do whatever. And, and um, you know, God condemns that kind of stuff like that. You know, that, like I said, they'll get their reward. Now, Muhammad taught that people who did not willingly become Muslims must be forced to become Muslims or be killed. You know, today they still do that. You know, they force people to either become a Muslim or we kill you. Or at the very least, we're going to tax you to death. You know, that's that jizz attack or whatever. You know, Jesus never taught that. Jesus said to preach the gospel to all creatures, but if they refuse and want to go to hell, then their blood is on them. You know, that's what Ezekiel was talking about, the, the watchman on the wall, that our job is to go out and preach the gospel. If they want to refuse, and most will refuse, that's fine, but their blood's off me. You know, I did my part, I told them, and then if they want to go to hell, they have that freedom. God allows people to have that, that right, that freedom, to, to uh, go to hell. He doesn't want little puppets out there that you have to convert. You know, but that's not what Muslims do. You know, Jesus never said you had to kill someone who refused to become a Christian. You know, of course, you could never make somebody become a true Christian anyway. You know, the Roman Catholics used to do that too. They try to make people become a Christian, you know, in their mind a Christian. You know, in other words, become a Roman Catholic. <clears throat> but they're not true Christians, you know. But you cannot make somebody become a true Christian. And, you know, Jesus condemned that. You know, he never said that, you know, make everybody become a Roman Catholic or whatever, either, you know, Baptist or whatever. You know, like I said, we're out there to preach the word, and that's it. And if they refuse, they have that option. If they want to go to hell and spend eternity in the lake of fire. You know, but that's not what Islam, you know, Muhammad is like, no, nope, you either convert or we kill you. You know, again, thou shalt not kill, Jesus said, and to love thine enemy. Now, Muhammad brought darkness to the world as he turned people away from Jesus and to Satan, who is uh, who Allah is. You know, Allah is nothing more than Satan. Now, Allah was the moon god of Muhammad's tribe, and so Muhammad was pushing idolatry. Now, Scripture says, behind every idol is a devil. Now, God condemns idolatry. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Look, this is another one of the Ten Commandments. But Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You know, and over and over, we see that God condemns idolatry. He tells you know, that in De Deuteronomy that every idol is really a devil behind it. You know, these false gods. Now, Jesus, on the other hand, you know, so that includes Allah. Jesus, on the other hand, brought light to the world as he came as the Savior of the world. You know, and remember too, Allah, you know, he's this mean, mean God. You know, he, you know, even Muslims not sure if they're going to make it or not. And, you know, the heaven and so forth. That, that uh, Why would you want to serve somebody like that? But as I said, Jesus, on the other hand, brought light to the world as he came as the Savior of the world. Jesus came to bring us salvation from sin and Satan, whereas Muhammad put Muslims in bondage to sin. The Quran recognizes that Jesus brought the gospel demand and approves of it. They just say that scripture had distorted the gospel, but they do see it as a good thing. So they under, they recognize that Jesus brought the gospel, and they're not necessarily saying it was a bad thing. They just believe that the, you know the Bible that we have has distorted it. You know that they have the true you know gospel within the Quran and so forth, and it's been added to you know that, that Muhammad had the latest revelation. But Jesus said he was the only way to heaven. Look at John chapter 14, verse 6. With John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
You know, you can only get to God the Father by Jesus. You know, not by Muhammad, not by Allah, or Buddha, or Pope, or Mary, or anybody else. Now, Muhammad admitted to being a sinner, as does the Quran, whereas Jesus was the only sinless man, or any person for that matter, to ever live. Surah, from the Quran here, Surah 48, verse 2 says, So that Allah may forgive you for your past and future shortcomings, perfect his favor upon you, guide you along the straight path. You know, so both Muhammad and the Quran admit today that Muhammad was a sinner. You know, Muhammad said he was a sinner, and the Quran says he was a sinner. But yet, Scripture says that Jesus was sinless. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You know, he was made sin for us, but he knew no sin. He only, he took on our sins, but he did not deserve to die because he had no sin. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. You know, remember, if Jesus had sinned, he could not have been our Savior. He would have needed a Savior for himself. You know, he had to be that perfect sinless sacrifice. So 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Who did, speaking of Jesus here, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. You know, guile is, is like, uh, you know, bad things and so forth like that. But, uh, you know, like filth or whatever. But we see that he did no sin. Now, Muhammad oftentimes saved his own life at the expense of the lives of others. Jesus gave his life for his friends and enemies. You know, there's the difference. You know, Muhammad was trying to save his life, but yet Jesus gave his life. Not only for his friends, but for his enemies, including for Muhammad. Now, Jesus even taught that we should be willing to give our lives for our friends, whereas Muhammad said to save yourself. You know, again, that's very selfish, and that's, uh, you know, obviously shows he's not a saved man. That shows the difference here. But look at John chapter 15, verse 13. So John chapter 15, verse 13. It's Jesus speaking here. And he says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And as I said, not only did Jesus teach that for his friends, but he did it for his enemies as well. Now, Jesus gave his life as the Passover sacrificial lamb so that everyone might be saved. Now, let's look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. So 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Muhammad had thoughts of suicide after getting the supposed revelations from Gabriel, whereas Jesus was obedient to God's calling and faced the devil in the wilderness. Let's take a look at um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. So Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. You know, so we're going to see here that, um, you know, Muhammad, he gets revelation. He wants to go commit suicide. What's Jesus do? He goes... All right, I'm going to go out there and confront, you know, you want me to, you, you give me this and you tell me that you want me to do this, uh, God the Father? Yes, bless the Lord. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to confront Satan in the wilderness. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. You know, Jesus never ran away from his calling or acted like a coward as Muhammad did. You know, the, 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 you know that's the difference there. Jesus was obedient. He, he went face on to his enemy, you know, went head on with Satan, whereas Muhammad, you know, wanted to kill himself. And the Hadith confirms that Muhammad had suicidal thoughts. You know, the, the Muslims, are, you know, they're not, they don't deny this, that he had suicidal thoughts or whatever. You know, they say that he never actually attempted it, but he did have these thoughts about attempting it or whatever. But either way, it, it just shows you the difference there. You know, and again, God condemns suicide as well. You know, again, that, that's killing. You know, thou shalt not kill. Well, you don't have to kill yourself either. Now, Muhammad taught that Muslims need to take pilgrimages to Mecca, 
when Jesus said to go out into the world and preach the gospel, but never said a Christian had to go to Jerusalem, his empty tomb, or anywhere else. You know, God never told us to go around taking these pilgrimages. You know, the Roman Catholics, again, because they started it, have similar things where they take all, do all these pilgrimages. And, you know, but Jesus never said that. He never said we had to go to where his empty tomb was to see it. We never have to go to, to uh, Jerusalem as holy city or something. Now, that's fine if you want to go and do those things. But, you know, we're not ordered to do those things. It's not going to make us a better Christian or anything else, you know. Now, Muhammad said that Allah had abrogated or replaced some parts of the Quran, whereas Jesus taught that all of Scripture is inspired and profitable for doctrine. So look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, so Jesus says that all of Scripture, you know, there's none of it that, you know, where the Muslims, as I said, they, 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 they teach, you know, Muhammad taught that, well, Allah had certain sections that they no longer apply. These have been advocated. They've been removed or whatever, and they've been replaced with this. You know, Jesus never said that, you know, that it's all was profitable. You know, he said, Jesus said he came to fill the law, not get rid of it. So let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. So Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think that Jesus is speaking here. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. You know, so Jesus never said any part of Scripture was no longer valid, as many people say today. You know, many people say, oh, well, the Old Testament does, does, doesn't apply to us, or, you know, we don't we don't obey the, this and that anymore. Ten Commandments, that kind of stuff. You know, Jesus never said that. He just said, I came to fulfill the law. You know, we are now to go directly to Him. We don't go to a priest and so forth, but, you know, all of Scripture is still, still accurate. Genesis 1 through 11 is still accurate. It's, 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 you can read it in my book, you know, Genesis 1 through 11. It, uh, you know, all these things, you know, nothing was ever replaced. Nothing was ever removed. Like, okay, well, I've did away with that, and now I want you to do this, as they, you know, have done in the Quran. So in closing, Muhammad died and his body remained in the grave while his soul and spirit went to hell. You know, Muhammad right now is burning in hell. He will spend eternity in the lake of fire. Jesus died for our sins so that we did not have to die. He took our place on the cross for us. Jesus died and was buried and rose again from the grave on the third day. Look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. And Matthew chapter 28, verse 6. He is not here. This is an angel speaking to them. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. You know, so the angel is saying that, you know, Jesus is not here. He's risen. And then go to Mark chapter 16, verse 6. This will be the last verse we look at. So Mark chapter 16 and verse 6. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. You know, Jesus is, is, is risen from that grave. The tomb of Jesus has remained empty since that day. And Jesus remains alive today, never to die again. You know, we've seen that in our study in Revelation. Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. You can find that in many places, such as in Hebrews and so forth. You know, so Jesus rose from that grave. He's sitting at the right-hand side of God the Father in heaven, whereas Muhammad's burning down in hell, being tormented. You know, that man is being greatly tormented, probably even greater than many others, because of what he has caused by this false religion and the killing of the people and all the, the things that he did and turning so many people away from God. You know, he's probably receiving much greater torment than many other people. But he is burning in hell, whereas Jesus is victoriously sitting up there in heaven. Remember, the right side is the prominent side. And when you're seated, it means your work is done. Now, Jesus is the true way to heaven and not Muhammad or Islam. Muhammad was a false prophet and was from Satan and not God. 
Allah is not God, but rather a devil or the devil. For Muslims listening, then please leave Islam and realize that Jesus is the only way of salvation. Jesus is the true prophet of God and the true final prophet and the only one that spoke the truth. Muhammad will only lead you on a path to hell. You know, as I said, in Islam, you never even know. There's no guarantee, you know, plus you're always going around want to kill yourself and this and that. You know, Jesus never said do all those things, go blow yourself up and that kind of stuff. You know, why do you want to serve a, a religion or God of that kind of thing? As I said, Muhammad will only lead you on a path to hell. The life of Jesus was much greater than that of Muhammad, and even the Quran bears that out if you truly open your eyes to see. Reject Muhammad and choose Jesus today and choose life. You know, even the Quran tells you over and over, you, I've seen show you some examples of all the things, how, how Jesus was much greater than Muhammad. Jesus could do all these miracles, Muhammad never did. Jesus was sinless, Muhammad was not. Jesus raised the dead, Muhammad killed people. You know, Jesus never forced anybody to convert, Muhammad did. The, you know, over and over and over, you know, Jesus ran to his calling, Muhammad wanted to commit suicide, I and mean, he was a coward. Is that the kind of man you want to serve? You want to serve a coward, or you want to serve, you know, a true God man that, that uh, you know, he, Jesus is the man, you know, he was a man's man. And, um, you know, only Jesus will give you life. Like I said, you reject Jesus and you will burn for all eternity in the lake of fire with Muhammad. So I beg you to please reject Islam, reject Muhammad, and choose Jesus today so that you might have everlasting life in heaven. Let's have a word of prayer. So, Father, we thank you for this time you've given us this morning to just look at a few things comparing Jesus with Muhammad or Muhammad with Jesus, however you want to say it, that, that uh, we clearly see that, that even the Quran itself, besides Scripture, then even the Quran itself shows you how much greater Jesus was than Muhammad. You know, why the Muslims cannot open their eyes to see this thing, they're so blinded by Satan, to see that Muhammad was not even close to being greater by his own admission than uh, Jesus, that why would they want to follow a man like that that's just going to lead them on a path to hell? That I pray, Lord, that, that their eyes will be open, they'll be convicted from hearing some of this, and they'll turn from Muhammad and Islam, and they'll open up scriptures of the King James Bible and see what your word says, starting in John and Romans and so forth, and, and uh, just see that Jesus truly is God, and he is the only way to heaven. That it, it, If they want true everlasting life, you know, they're not going to get these 70 virgins in heaven or anything that, that Islam teaches. That um, They won't need them in heaven anyway. They won't even want them when they're in heaven. They're going to want to be around Jesus. And so, Father, we just pray that they'll be convicted so that, that their eyes might be opened up. They might be able to see the truth and turn from Islam and Muhammad and turn to Jesus be saved. And Father, if there's anybody else, even if they're not a Muslim, that if they're not saved, that today might be the day of their salvation as well. That, you know, as we're starting this pride month, that, you know, you say that uh, pride cometh before destruction. And so, you know, that these people all want to be proud to be LGBTQ and all this stuff. Well, you know, you said that pride comes before destruction. And if they all don't repent, their pride is going to bring them straight to a path to hell. And so, Father, we want to pray for all these people, too, as, as they are blinded also by Satan. And so, Father, we just pray that you may bless the later service. Just be with each and every one. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.